Hi guys, good morning. Today we are going to talk about the interface between sociology and theology or sociology and religion. The fundamental question is, can there be a scientific study of religion? Generally, there are two approaches possible. There's a traditional approach, which is a conflictual approach or a rivalry approach. Theology and sociology are considered to be hostile to each other. Basically, the sociologists consider that theology deals with supernatural realities and sociologists can only do what matters to them in terms of empirical reality. Because theology is supernatural, it is meta-empirical reality and therefore they cannot do any study of religion scientifically. Secondly, sociologists thought religion is not a phenomenon. It is basically epiphenomenal. It is not of importance because it is illusion created by the external conditions of society. And therefore, society after all, as Fraser calls, he would say religion is only a cognitive mistake of the primitive man. Hence, sociologists would distance themselves from anything to do with religion. Theologians, on the other hand, used to say, if you want to study religion, you need to be a believer. You can only study religion from an insider's point of view, not by using any scientific method. Some theologians also adopt an attitude of suspicion towards sociology. For example, John Milbank would say, sociologists basically are not concerned about knowledge, but they are concerned about the exercise of power. To do that, they will set certain criteria for what objectivity is and because religion does not measure up to the criteria of objectivity, they would say, well, it does not fit in our quest for scientific study. Therefore, theologians would say, sociologists, because they exercise power, they are not interested about knowledge and therefore much less about religious knowledge. Now, let us talk about the second approach. The second approach is basically what we call an emerging partnership. There is a paradigm shift both among the sociologists and among the theologians. Sociologists began to realize that sociology cannot explain away the content of religion. They also began realizing crude empiricism or positivism need not be the only scientific approach. Again, sociologists realized that religion does matter in today's society and therefore we can study it scientifically. Therefore, there is a shift in the thinking of the sociologists that we can have a partnership, a collaboration with religion. From the point of view of the theologians, what made the paradigm shift is primarily the Second Vatican Council. Until the Second Vatican Council, the classical theology was doctrine centered. Now, with post Vatican Council, we realize orthodoxy matters, but also there should be room for orthopraxis. We also have in the classical theology, theology is an objective science of faith. In the post-Vatican scenario, we realize theology is also a socio-cultural interpretation of a given time, therefore it is hermeneutical as well. The sources of theology traditionally has been scripture and tradition. The post-Vatican, though it affirms the importance of scripture and tradition, would also add human experience, the human context as another important source. Because of this emerging partnership, theologians would say, well, the meeting of sociology and theology can be considered as meeting of humanistic and scientific cultures. If sociology comes up with scientific methods, theology gives some humanistic value content to this. Sociologists would say that they need to approach not a hypercritical attitude towards religion or theology but they need to have a sympathetic detachment in their study of religion. 
Now finally, let us talk about this impact of emerging partnership, both for sociologists and theologians. At least we can say on five important factors they agree. The sociologists also realize in the first place that they cannot have a superficial generalization about religion. Each religion is unique and it has to be studied in a different way. They cannot study one religion and apply it to all religions by way of generalization. Secondly, sociologists and theologians together realize their partnership can set an agenda for action. The fact that theology should help us to lead, need, lead into concrete action, sociologists can contribute to that. Thirdly, there is also a need to reflect the not only the intended consequences or the manifest consequences of religion, but the latent consequences of religion. What the religious authorities do not necessarily foresee, sociologists can help religion to discover what are the latent consequences or the unintended consequences of religion. We also have another important contribution because of sociology, there is a need for what is known as contextual way of doing theology, precisely because there is a social determinant for theology. Hence, we have today the clamor for contextual theology began with liberation theology in Latin America, we have black theology, we have feminist theology and in India, we have tribal theologies and Dalit theologies and so on and so forth. And finally, and most importantly, there is also a need for theological pluralism. The need for theological pluralism means what theology one had in the ancient past is not necessarily what we can hold on today. Because if social contexts play a role, theology has to be constantly reinvented. Therefore, there can be different or plural ways of doing theology, depending on the context and time in which one lives. And so far, we have discussed about the interface between theology and sociology or interface between sociology and religion. In the next lecture, I will speak to you about some of the classical sociologists. We will begin with Emil Durkheim. Thank you. Cheers.